We've organized our code so we have one order object that gets shared between all our screens, which has the advantage that we can move back and forward between those screens without losing data. However, this approach comes with a cost. We've had to use the at published property wrapper for the properties in the class. And as soon as we did that, we lost support for automatic codable conformance. If you don't believe me, just try modifying the definition of order to include codable, like this. The build will now fail, because Swift doesn't understand how to encode and decode published properties. This is a problem, because we want to submit the user's order to an internet server, which means we have to have it as JSON. We need the codable protocol to work. The fix here is to add codable conformance by hand, which means telling Swift what should be encoded, how it should be encoded, and also how it should be decoded, converted back from JSON to Swift data. That first step means adding an enum that conforms a coding key, listing all the properties we want to save. In our order class, that's almost everything. The only thing we don't want is a static types property. So add this enum to order now. Enum coding keys conforms the coding key. Case type, quantity, extra frosting, add sprinkles, name, street address, city, and zip. The second step requires us to write an encode to method that creates a container using the coding keys enum we just created, then writes out all the properties attached to their respective key. This is just a matter of calling encode for key repeatedly, each time passing in a different property and coding key. Add this method to order now. Func encode to encoder encoder throws. Var container equals encoder dot container keyed by coding keys dot self. Try container dot encode type for key dot type. Try container dot encode quantity for key dot quantity. Then we'll encode extra frosting. and add sprinkles, name, street address, city, and finally zip. Because that method is marked with throws, we don't have to worry about catching any of the errors that are thrown inside. We can just use try without adding catch, knowing that any problems will automatically propagate upwards and be handled elsewhere. Our final step is to implement a required initializer to decode an instance of order from some archive data. This is pretty much a reverse of encoding and even benefits from the same throws functionality. Required init from decoder decoder throws. Let container equals try decoder dot container keyed by coding keys dot self. Type equals try container dot decode int dot self for key type. Then we'll decode quantity extra frosting Add sprinkles, name, street address, city, and finally zip. It's worth adding here that you can encode your data in any order you want. You don't have to match the order in which properties are declared in your object. That makes our code fully codable compliant. We effectively bypass the at published property wrapper, reading and writing the values directly. However, it doesn't make our code compile. In fact, we now get a completely different error back in contentview.swift. The problem now is that we just created a custom initializer from our order class, init from and Swift wants us to use it everywhere, 
even in places where we just want to create a new empty order because the app just started. Fortunately, Swift lets us add multiple initializers to a class, so we can create it in any number of different ways. In this situation, that means we need to write a new initializer that can create an order without any data whatsoever. It'll rely entirely on the default property values we assigned. So, add this new initializer to Coda now. In it. And now our code's back to compiling. And our codable conformance is complete. This means we're ready for the final step, which is sending and receiving order objects over the network.